EA Interviews, Episode 84. Inspiration, Transformation, Success Stories, and the Imperfect Action Round. Seven days a week. Join Mario Ficini for today's Expert Authority Effect interview. Have you ever wanted to take the content you're using and get more out of it? I don't know about you, but on occasion I've been known to shoot a video or two. But what do you do once it's done? Do you set it on an archive you know, for the next year or two? Do you not do anything with it? I have. I fully have a whole hard drive that needs to be restored and basically rebuilt with hundreds and hundreds of testimonials and videos and all kinds of stuff. That does no one any good. What do you do with your podcast? What do you do with your Facebook Live? What do you do with your YouTube videos? Well, I am beyond excited to share with you today Hanny Mora with Repurpose.io. He created a software that I've been using since the launch of my podcast to do guess what? Repurpose, clever name, repurpose your content and leverage it more. So if you have a podcast, if you do Facebook Live, if you do YouTube Live, if you have any audio, video, blog post, or content you want to leverage more, you're going to want to listen to this episode because it's the coolest software on the face of ever for what it does. So I'm going to bring him up right after we thank our sponsor. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Hanny Mora. Hanny, how are you? I'm awesome, Mario. Good, man. I appreciate you having me on the show. How are you doing? I, I'm feeling great. I told you I was going to come in with that. You were prepared. I love it. I, uh, I've sincerely, like I was saying, I've been wanting to feature you and your software and everything since I, but before I even launched, because I was using it before I even met you or even had an idea for a show. I was using it uh, for video. And then I went back when I go, you know what? I'm going to launch the podcast. I was like, holy smokes, you can do podcast stuff with it too. And it's just such a great software. So what was your inspiration for starting it? I mean, why, why did you go, you know what? I want to make this easier for everyone. What, what, what got you going with it? Yeah, well, for me, getting started into – I always loved creating. I always loved creating videos when I was a kid. So I always had this – urge to create and then I, I went to school for computer engineering software engineering so anyway long story short one day i knew i just had this urge like i need to create something that's my own some software related to video use my skills and my passion combine them together um and so i kind of started with something small with a, a wordpress plugin for youtube and it was solving my own problem as a content creator i was making tons of videos how-to videos putting them on youtube then I made it software that would put them onto my blog automatically because that's something I hated doing manually. And honestly, that's how the uh, kind of the crazy automation itch kind of took an effect. It's like I created that first software. I was like, wow, this is awesome. I loved it. I shared it with a few people and they loved it too. They said, this is saving me a ton of time. Something so small can save me a ton of time. And then it, it grew from there. It evolved from one tool to the next to the next. And uh, I think we're about six tools later, we have repurpose.io. Um, so yeah, it was all about a, I had this urge to create as a, I don't want to say, I, I didn't know I was an entrepreneur. Like I just wanted, I love, I'm a creator, put it this way. I like to create stuff, um, had software skills. Uh, and then, but my, more of my passion was creating content. So combine my skill set of software with my passion of of uh you know creating videos and creating content and that's how that's how it started probably like six i want to say six years ago now and um yeah it's exciting it's exciting but now it's oh, the motivation is a lot different now it's uh it's not about creating it's about helping uh, helping people podcasters uh content creators, video live streamers now live streaming is a big thing so this focus has changed from doing it to kind of solve my own itch to helping others do more, leverage their content and get more really exposure for themselves. It's not about me anymore. Well, I'm glad it was about you in the beginning because ultimately I think a lot of inventions 
you know, softwares, whatever it is, it starts with our own problems. Yeah. It's like, hey, I just want to solve this and then will it help other people? Maybe, maybe not. But that's what it is and your your mission for it already was helping people because – I know as a content creator, as a live streamer, podcaster, whatever label you want to give me, I'd like to say CEO personally and cool, fun guy that makes you laugh. Huh. But regardless of what someone identifies themselves as in business, the reality is it's real easy to shoot a video. The hard part is the other 19 steps that go into it. And like I was saying, even before I had the podcast, full transparency, I had – I was thinking about it. And I was thinking about a lot of things and I'll never forget this because I have – how many videos do you think I've done? Let me, let, let's make this a little fun round. How many videos and or live streams do you think I've done on Facebook alone? Facebook alone. I want to say – are you hitting 50, 60? That's just for the, that's just for the show. That's just for and the I'm show. Up, I'm, I'm wow. up in the eight, uh, 80 – I'm up in the 80s. I'll say that. Wow. That's awesome. So good guess, but that's just for the show. Uh, I've been teaching video for a long time and it's what my first book is on. And last April or May when I found your software, you know, we didn't know each other. I didn't even have the show. And it's a little surreal because it's barely uh, – I'll say it. It's barely a year later, but I was looking for a solution. I, I didn't even know how many. I went into Facebook and dumped my data and I had over 3,000 videos and I was like, why aren't any of these on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. So I was, I, I was looking for a way and that's originally what I was using it for. Nice. Fast forward, you get some really slick stuff for the podcast that everyone should be using with the audiograms and different things I'll let you get into. But it is so – repurpose is so great for that and that's – how this came in came to be, but I want you to dive deeper with the other stuff because you've said six years in other softwares. Why don't you dive a little bit more into the other ones? Because I only found those out once I was using the other one, and there were some links in the dashboard and different stuff. Uh, and and I will say, in full disclosure for everyone listening, if you go to eainterviews.com, it's also using Hanny's WordPress um, plugin that I bought. So I in strongly encourage you to use it because that's freaking awesome also so i guess maybe start with that one since i just was talking about it yeah i mean the first first one was the first one i've ever created was so called uh, simple video press and the whole idea okay. was taking for youtube videos making blog posts because to me video is kind of like my native i, I love i was doing a lot of youtube videos uh, then i helping a friend doing podcasting and and uh, I didn't know what podcasting was at the time, but I was like, oh, okay. You want to take a video and make it to an audio? Cool. I'll help you edit. Yada, yada, yada. Long story short, um, it's like, all right. So he told me, he's like, why don't you take your video plugin and make it something similar for podcasters? Because they could really use the automation for automatically getting their content on their website. Boom. So we kind of converted it, made a spinoff product called Simple Podcast Press. And we built our own audio player and we built an automation that would you know, every time you put an episode on your, you know, on their podcast feed, which means basically you have a live episode, you know, on the iTunes and the uh, Spotify's and whatnot, basically it automatically goes to your blog. So you don't have to worry about it. Right. So that was the second plugin. And then there's actually a third plugin that came in about, it's a funny story because this platform is no longer around and it's, it's form. It was called Blab. Um, it was a live streaming. You can get like four people at a time when that picked up. I've made a lot of friends on Blab. And then I just, I, one day I was sitting there, I was like, wow, I wonder if I could automatically put these you know, live streams on people's WordPress site. Kind of hacked around a little bit. I'm like, wait a second, actually, yeah, there is a way. So I made a plugin that would take your Blab streams and automatically embed them on your blog. So I was using the same kind of platform, but spinning up, taking different inputs. First it was YouTube, then it was a podcast. And there was this platform called Blab, which died after a year, maybe a year and a half. But then Facebook Live. Meer Meerkat kind of did the same thing, and I loved Meerkat. Yeah, Meerkat. I never got into Meerkat. I, I wasn't into live streaming that that much. But Blab, what I liked about Blab was the the community. Like you got these. Usually you hop on, someone else hops on, and 
you have a, you know, four way car, you have a lot of conversation. I made a lot, a lot of friends. Like it was just really fun and a lot of time wasted or well spent, whatever you want to call it, but it was a ton of fun, but that platform did shut down. But at the same time, Facebook live was rolling in. So I thought, Hey, you know what? I'm going to, Make a plugin that will take Facebook Live videos or actually any video you upload to Facebook, automatically make the blog posts. And I'm like, what else can I do? I said, you know, let it import your pl your comments as well. Because as you know, Facebook Live, you tend to get a lot of comments. So we added that feature where you can take those comments from Facebook and make them WordPress comments so that your blog post, it's got a video and it's got a ton of comments on it already, which is good for SEO and it's just good for social proof in general. So we went from YouTube to podcasting to this intermediate platform called Blab. And then now we have Facebook Live or Facebook videos automatically going to your blog. So I was heavy, heavy in the WordPress space. I love WordPress. Content creators loved WordPress. So I kind of built my tools in that space. And then one day someone asked me, hey, can you take a Facebook Live and put it onto YouTube? I'm like, hmm. That's an interesting idea, but I can't do that in WordPress, right? WordPress is not meant to be doing heavy lifting like that. And then, you know, I was, a, I was stuck in my little square or circle of WordPress. And then I get different requests. Say, hey, can you take an audio and convert it to a video so I can put my podcast onto YouTube? I'm like, hey, that's a cool idea too. So I dig around. And then, I don't know, I just kind of like, I got enough requests from people, from friends, from customers. I'm like, you know what? I need to take this seriously. Like, this is an opportunity here to build a platform that kind of extends beyond WordPress. So it works with the plug, it complements the plugins that we already have, but it takes it to a whole new dimension because now you're not relying on WordPress and you're going from, um, instead of platform to your website, we're going from one social platform to another social platform. So that's how Repurpose was born. It was kind of, it served two purposes initially. One was take a Facebook Live, and send it to YouTube. That was the primary goal. And the goal was to do it hands-free, completely automated. So you go live on Facebook, when you're done, it just shows up on YouTube maybe an hour later or so. That was the goal two, two and a half years ago. And it works great for that. Yeah, and it's, it's just you set it and you say auto and it just does it. You don't need to log into the software, it's fully automated. And then the second goal was to help podcasters. Again, the podcasters want to take an audio file make it some kind of video with some kind of moving parts to it so that it doesn't look like a static image and automatically send that to YouTube. Um, so we built that feature. So those were two, honestly, the first two features that what we call a repurpose. That's all it did, uh, those two features when we kind of first soft launched it two and a half years ago. Um, again, listening to what people wanted, like it was, it sounds so obvious, but sometimes as a creator, you just need to just listen more to what your audience wants like whether you're creating software creating content whatever it is um and so we built those two features and that's where repurpose was born but it's evolved into it just it just evolved into another platform that can do a whole lot more right now and actually as of earlier this week it's even a lot more with video too so it's uh it's been an exciting two and a half years and now you can go from audio to video video to audio there's so much. I don't know if you want me to get into all the, the kind of different things you can do, but in general, I think of it as a platform that you can set your own rules. And you can take, for example, an audio, convert it to a video, send it off to Facebook and YouTube. You can take a Facebook Live, send it to YouTube. You can do a Facebook Live, convert it to an audio podcast. So you kind of set what's, take this content, do something with it, audio to video, video to video, or video to audio and send it to this platform. So you make all these rules, many rules as you want, and you let it go. And it's, it's really powerful because it allows you, the content creator, to just create the content. That's all you need to worry about. And the rest is, I don't wanna say 100% automated, but probably 75 to 80% automated. And we're continuously adding more and more integrations and automations. Well, I appreciate you for listening to people because I remember um, even when we were at the live event, we were walking to the next session or to dinner or wherever it was. Oh, it was for the party Saturday. That was fun. Um, <laughs> but 
uh, we were. Ta- I was going. Yeah, I just launched and this and that. Is there any way you can make it do nine fifty nine? Because I made a folder and uh, drive for nine fifty nine for LinkedIn and Instagram. Because I, I think it was like pre preset at like thirty seconds, and I was like, man, if I could do just under ten minutes for LinkedIn, and you were like. That's a good idea, and I think it was like with that week you had re-released it, and your I remember you messaged me going, "Hey, you can do longer clips now." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was your. I remember we had a chat. I don't know if we were chatted before the conference or right after the conference, but I remember we were having a chat. And I'm like, "Wow, that's a brilliant idea!" Like you can cut, you can predefine how long the the we call it a snippet or the, the snippet. Clip. Yeah, how long is that snippet? It was it was always hard coded to thirty, and you'd have to kind of adjust it per episode and you're like hey i wish you could always just for this for this rule i want it to always be 10 minutes or 959 so we added that and i'm like but those are the kind of examples where this is why i like about this it's an iterative process we create something based on what users actual heavy users want and then it's a cycle like we put it out there and then it's like oh can we just tweak this to make it a little more automated because to me automation and not Okay, automation or very clean, simple workflows for the content creator is what it's all about. If it's adding extra work, then it's not doing its job. Like repurpose is meant to, one, not change the way you do things. So you currently have your own system for creating the content. We don't change that. We don't interfere with that. All the work happens after. So if you do a video, you put on Facebook. Then we take over from Facebook and we do all the repurposing. So we don't affect how you create it. And then B, we try to make it as automated and adding small things just to make your, you know, your creation and distribution as automated as possible so that you can have all these predefined settings, templates, all that good stuff, intros, outros, you can upload to our system. Everything that you can put that would help you automate, that's what repurpose is all about. And so I love, we love here, I love hearing feedback from actual users and saying, hey, can you add this one little setting and make a huge difference? And if it makes total sense, we're on it. It did make a total difference because I was using it for Facebook and I was like 30 seconds is a good teaser and, you know, but I was like LinkedIn has a longer limit here and then uh, changing the background sizes. So I, I know we could do a half day training oh, yeah, on yeah, the yeah. best ways to do it. But uh, what I really like is the... Uh, what do you call them? How you can predefine this one goes from Facebook to YouTube, then up back up to Drive, and then this one here. When I set up the the rules, yeah. like you were saying, um, I, I have one called 959 Snippets, and it directly yeah. goes I, – I know that one's going for LinkedIn and uh, Instagram. This one's going over here. So like you're saying, once you do that initial setup – and I was actually referring it to people last year because I was geeked and excited about it, just sharing it on Facebook. And everyone's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, let me tell you about it. And I actually gave them – I'm thinking of someone specifically, a well-known person uh, who I was just looking to help and you know, I know – but I gave him all of my funnels and the rules, and I have probably 12 or 16 of them set up. Nice. You know, horizontal, rectangular, vertical. So that's three times each of the destinations. And then the lengths. To, I have two or three per thing. Yeah, there, I think there's 18. Wow. But um, it, it's a cool that's thing. Phenomenal. So I, I'm, I'm glad you created it. Tell me what's the biggest – so – I always ask what's the biggest transformation, but I mean, we're, we're talking, we've been talking about that uh, plenty as far as the transformations it does in your business. And it, if you have a podcast, get this. It's awesome. You can check it out, eainterviews.com forward slash repurpose IO. I'll make sure the link is in the show links. I'll make sure the link is in the show notes. It's a fantastic tool. I can't recommend it better. Tell me about your biggest success story. Who is someone that was not using it before they got your tool and then, you know, the biggest success story or the biggest podcaster, the biggest YouTuber, like, yeah. Um, I'm just, I hear kind of like people leaving feedback on the Facebook groups, but I mean, everyone to me, big or small, I, I feel like I make a difference. Like repurpose makes a difference. But to me early on, it was, um, you know, our friend, John Lee Dumas, he was, I was, I remember I was in an interview. I was sorry, watching a Facebook live him. And I think it was, he was interviewing with Joel Calm and they were doing an interview and he was explaining how he was doing, how he was converting audios into videos. 
And he kind of walked through the process was before he knew about repurpose. We've known each other. He's using my plugins before. Um, and then I watched him explain. I'm like, whoa, this is so inefficient. I know he's got a team that's doing it, but it's so inefficient. So as soon as the live was over, I messaged him. I'm like, dude, I had this software. Did you know that? He's like, no, I didn't. He's like, with one click, it's done. And he's like, come on. So we hopped on a call. I showed him. He's like, dude, this is brilliant. <laughs> so we got on the call with his team and, uh, you know, we set them all up to get them onto YouTube and onto Facebook automatically. And he's been using it ever since. And he highly recommends it. Like every keynote he does, he's talking about repurpose.io. And um, it's just about taking, it's just about systemizing and automating the tedious stuff that's not going to bring you value. Like having on a platform brings you value, but you uploading it and you making a video yourself, it's not a good use of your time. That's why uh, repurpose.io is a great platform for that. Yeah, because you can get sucked into the social media. It's like for every one ep episode I produce, it's like you could come up with 20, 30 hours of stuff to do when really it's like you need to keep shooting and keep you know bringing the value to the audience, not getting stuck with office work. So. Exactly. Uploading, downloading, converting, and it's just like you're exhausted. I mean the content is what matters and you want to be producing and publishing consistent content. But if you know you've got a checklist of like 30 different platforms you have to – download and upload to is just like, duh, no thanks. <laughs> I don't want to make more content. It's just creating more work for me. So the idea of repurpose is just to kind of free you from that stress of, it's almost like it's freeing because you know, you don't have to worry about a lot of it. You just have to worry about creating your content, whether your, your content is audio, whether your content is video or, or both, uh, you know, repurpose takes care of both types of platforms. It's pretty much the interwebs between text, audio, and video. It's like that's all of it. I mean so, so many people think it's so complicated like, oh, there's all these things. I go, Every, everything is a web page. You know, for people going, oh, you don't need a website anymore. Everything's a website. Mm -hmm. Did they just make it into an app you don't download your phone? But it's all web content, ones and zeros, images, video, and uh, text. Yeah. And you, I would say – probably 10 to 15 hours a week it it has saved me wow i mean it was one of the first things even before i launched i had 34 episodes ready to go for the launch month and i was just like man i gotta be talking about a new one every day and i was like Done. i got a secret weapon <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I love hearing a story i mean to me it's saving time is like it brings me joy like it brings me joy to hear people like I know somebody as well who was using it. He was doing five like daily live streams. I think even multiple times per day on different shows. And I can appreciate he's, that. He's like, you. He goes, you can't even imagine. Like he was so grateful. Like the messages you get, but like honest, genuine. They're not even testimonials. They're just people messaging me saying, "I'm so grateful for your software because it saves me like a ton of time." I used to do this all manually, downloading from my Facebook Lives to my computer and then uploading and then waiting for it to upload and putting a title and a description. And that times, you know, three, four times a day, every day, that's not a good use of your time. Um, so, yeah, so I get a lot of these messages kind of like what you're saying. Um, it's, 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 I, I, I always use this expression, it's freeing not having to worry about the distribution part focusing your energy on the creation part. And that's what repurpose lets you do. Yeah. The only uh, thing I've heard people like even five, six years ago with, you know, just in business in general, they're like, I'll tell you all my secrets and the secrets is they organized it in a spreadsheet. I'm like, <laughs> I'm all about organizing, knowing your numbers, you know, make sure the profit margins, you know, where you want it and high and this, you know, you need to do some behind the scenes stuff, but there's, just so much stuff you can get sucked into. And it's like, okay, so you organized a mess, but it's still a mess. <laughs> yeah. We need to eliminate this mess and not ever have it come back again because this cuts into hot tub, boating, and lunchtime. Mm -hmm. That's the part. <laughs> I don't want to be doing social media stuff. I want to get something and just have it off my mind That's because – there's plenty of other stuff that is a better use of it, like you were saying. Absolutely. So let me ask you about speaking and doing interviews. How has public speaking and doing interviews helped your business? 
Um, I, I don't do a lot of public speaking. I've done a couple, I think twice now. Um, I'm actually speaking again on uh, a podcast movement in, in August. It's more like a I saw that. technical demo, so that'd be fun. Um, but It still counts, though. You're yeah. still impacting a bigger crowd, helping them. Yeah, but, but, but to be honest, like just from, there's two aspects to it. For me, it's interviews have been amazing. A, uh, I'm fortunate to be in a business so like my software serves an audience that are podcasters. So I get a lot of requests, especially early on, uh, a lot less now, but early on people was, you know, their custom, my customers were podcasters. So the first question is, Oh, I'd love to have you on my show. And I was like, hey, I'm honored. Like, let's, let's do it. Right. So I, I get on the show and the first couple of times I did not know what to say, how to act, how to, you know, I was very, it was very more scripted. Like, like I was taking a lot of notes before a show, but I've done so many of these now that I enjoy this opportunity just to kind of have a conversation and um, how it helped my business. I mean, I'm sure it's got me exposure, but to me, it's not about, it's not like I'm here to market myself. I'm here to just give value, but also connect with the person who's interviewing me. Like you and I, we met in person at the, at the pod fest and, and a few months ago now, I guess in March. And I don't know, you just build a relationship with people um, who, who, you, who are interviewing you, even if you've never met them before. And uh, it's, it's been great. I, I love every opportunity. Uh, sometimes I like, you know, scheduling conflicts. I can't do it right away and whatnot, but I love the opportunity to talk and have conversations. Um, but another thing I found really important for my business was face-to-face, -face, like conferences, things like conferences. That you cannot be, you cannot, the human aspect of any business or you know, any kind of business or service or product that you're selling, it's like, I've, people have told me like by meeting me in person, they get a whole different vibe than seeing me make a video or how to video or trying to see my sales page. When they see me, they meet me at the conferences, we chat, they get a feel for the person behind the product. And that's made a world of a difference, especially for my podcasting plugin and now repurpose. Uh, because when I got into, when I launched my podcasting plugin, I like, it seemed like everyone knew each other in the podcasting space and I knew nobody and I was launching a software in podcasting space. And, um, you know, I met people through Facebook groups, but I went to the first podcasting conference for uh, podcast movement, I think 2014. And that changed everything for me. Like I met people face to face and, and people had just told me that that made a difference. Like they meet the person behind the product that help the human connection have really helped. So any business you're in, any, any kind of product service you're offering, um, you want to get out there and be face to face with, with, I want to say customers, but be face to face with potential customers because I found myself personally, um, people are more than half or not more than half, a lot of people have become friends. Like I don't even, I forget that they're customers. Like, I, you know, we message each other. We say, Hey, how's it going? We're looking forward to see you at the conference as friends. And then I look back and I'm like, wait a second, this guy was a customer when we first met. So customers become friends. It's, it's a human connection. You need to get out there, especially if you're a software person like me who likes to hide behind a desk and do coding and architecting and stuff like that. Um, getting out there is, can be hard, but I recommend it for sure. For sure. Well, that is a great suggestion because I can do both sides of it. I'm perfectly content and there's many times I don't want to have to get dressed, get on the lights, get on the camera, get on, you know, the first couple of interviews I did, uh, people asking me on their show, I, I always ask, is it going to be audio or video? And a lot of them say audio and I'm like, oh, cool, I can relax. Yeah. So so it's a, it's a great suggestion because a lot of people do get stuck in their ways. If you're used to being behind the scenes mm – -hmm you can never be in front of it, but the times you are, it is so important to do that, whether you're comfortable with it or not. Yeah. Whether yeah. you're comfortable with it or not, but the, there's nothing greater. It's why I was excited to start the show. People, relationships. I love people. I love helping people. What is the show going to be about? I don't know, but I'm going to reach a lot of people and help them. Yeah. And it's working itself out. Yeah. That's and that's what I noticed about you too. You're down to earth and you have that heart of gold. Because a lot of people just 
you, it's very easy to look at software. It's very easy for software companies to look at people as transactional. Mm -hmm. It's easy for any business to do that, let alone software companies. And you're just awesome. I can't wait to see you again in person. It was great hanging with yeah, you in person. I remember the first time I saw you, I, and this happens with a lot of people. It's like, I don't know. I feel like I, I knew you, even though we've never met. When I first met you, it was almost like not, not if people saw us, they thought we were buddies for like ever, right? <laughs> like, I don't know. I just felt like a connection. And I don't know. I just feel, especially in the podcasting communities, like they're very, people are very open, very welcoming, very appreciative. And, and it's not a very like nasty competitive space. Everyone's there to help, especially at these conferences. Everyone's there to learn and help each other. And uh, yeah, I've I've made a lot, a lot of friends that people I call friends now, like real friends in the, from the podcasting, just by showing up to conferences. And I, you know, I don't go that often. It's once a year. This year I'm going to do two. Um, that's that's a lot for me. <laughs> um, but also doing doing live videos. Sorry, kind of to go off on a tangent. I just had a recent comment I want to share with somebody. I haven't gone live on our on our repurpose page in a while. And then we did our Facebook Live. Actually, a customer recommended I do this once a month just to kind of be in the educating and teaching. And then I had an interesting comment from somebody from the group. And she said, oh, you know, it's been so kind of quiet in here. And it was really nice to see you, how genuine you are and like you're a real person. I was thinking that there was no real people behind this company until I saw you live on the camera. And I was like, oh. That's great feedback. Like it's just um, people people buy from people, whether they're buying software, they're buying they're buying from another person. So if you have that human connection, put it out there, connect with people. Uh, it's you know it'll do you business wonders. Well, I'm glad you uh, you just made me rem uh, remember that this is live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so chill to just relax and talking to you. I was like, oh, this is live. Oh, yeah, oh, people okay. <laughs> but 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 that's the thing about it is just staying out there in front of them. People do like that connection. Yeah. yeah. They feel like and have you ever thought about doing it weekly instead of monthly now? Um, not yet. We just started doing monthly. We've done three um so far. And the next one's actually I would check my calendar. It's in a week or so. So we're gonna do our fourth one. I like it. Uh, and it's, you know, I try to, I try to teach something and then I try to give a sneak peek of what's coming. That's kind of our thing. Teach something as how to use a certain feature within the product that you may have not heard about or not know what's there. And then kind of give a hint of what's coming. Um, so yeah, once a month is good. Uh, not because I don't want to, it's just because I feel like, I don't know, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I, I don't know. Like I really appreciate content creators who go out there and do a show every week because like, I feel like I have to make everything perfect and I got to get over That's just me. I got to get over that. Um, so yeah, with the schedule, with the load, with the summer coming now, I just feel like that's once a month is, is good. And, you know, I have enough information, new information to share in a month. Every week, I may not have anything new to talk about. Um, but mind you, I'm sure I could talk for like an hour or two every day if I had to. <laughs> Well, I have no doubt you could have 24 hours straight of value from what you know and the people you've helped in different – I mean even if it's not a new feature release, you could talk about, hey, here's a new unique way I've thought about. Mm -hmm. Here's one you, – you should have – actually have uh, people like me submit all the ways they're using the rules and how many different ones they have because I thought there was only one you could create. Then I realized there was multiples and I was like – how efficient can I make this? Exactly. So it doesn't need to be a new feature. It could just be one that's been in there and someone's just using more efficient. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like one thing I wanted to do is get more like success stories from users, but this is even better. It's like you share, a user shares how they use it with other users so that they can get ideas on how to, other ways they can repurpose or, or automate some of their work. That's a great idea, actually. Um, it allows me to well, thank like, you. not feel the pressure of, always feel I have to produce the content, but at least, you know, like I like, I feel I offer value to the group, but I feel users offer more value to other users because they're in there, you know, all the time and they're getting, you know, they're trying things out, certain things get them good results. And then they share that in the group. And that's where everybody learns, including me. Like I learn from my users a lot, not how, not how it works, but like what's, what's working for them, what's not working and how we can help uh, automate and systemize even more. 
And I'm sure you have just as many success stories that you could probably do a live video daily with a different success story. I don't know how many people you have, but I have no doubt you could be doing all the content in the world. Kind of like, and I'm going to plug your software again because it's one of my favorite features, the same way you take the uh, iTunes reviews from the podcast Mm -hmm. and pop them through on the website. Yeah. You'd only need 50 or – think about that. 50 or 100 success stories in 50 or 100 different ways your users are using it and that's one new piece of content every day for a quarter. Yeah. That's yeah. That's that's right. one email to your audience. Yeah, you're right. Like there is a like there's a ton of value. Just need to just need to mine it out. Just ask for it and then just get it out. Um, yeah, no, that's that's a brilliant idea. And you're right. Like I think it's me that's holding it back. It's like I'll, I'll tell you another short story. I, I, I talk a lot, but this um, like we do this every month, and I'm I'm very grateful for our customers, especially the one that she's helping me run the show every month. And so we didn't actually book a date for the for the last one we did. We said, okay, we'll play it by ear, this and that. And then she messaged me. She's like, okay, we're going to do it this Friday, right? And I said, oh, you know, we're in the middle of this release. She's like, no, we're doing this Friday, right? I'm like, I have nothing to talk about. She's like, we're doing it this Friday, right? I'm like, yes, we are. And it was great. It was a great hit. And it was a lot of value. And so it's like, I get in my own way. So I, sometimes I appreciate people kind of like pushing me to not pushing me it's just giving that little nut. encourage i say encourage, encourage with my clients i'm gonna with, encourage you yeah with a little kick in the butt and just say okay <laughs> go do it and i'm just guilty of coming up with a million excuses but there's no excuse like just i committed to it i gotta do it and um no i appreciate it. i appreciate these ideas because like you said like you can give value to other users other you have values other users can give values to you um, just how, just about how you use the software. So it's not all about the features. It's about how you use those features to get the results. The strategies. Yeah, which platform. Because those, those are what people are actually putting into, you know, it's cool. It has these 10 features or 20 or whatever, let's say, but there's probably 101 ways, like a Rubik's Cube. How many different ways are people using it for their, in, you know, and then you could even have a, a cheat sheet or a checklist of, are you in this industry? Is your podcast about this? Are you... You know what I mean? Just have those like recipes of, oh, you're a dentist that's using it for this on this type of way. Boom. Here's the five things that work best. Oh, that's a good idea. I- Instead of toying around for three months, I like to create stuff also and make stuff efficient. And it's how I help get my clients expertise out of their head into books and videos and podcasts and all that. So I enjoy just give me a pile of problems and I figure them out and solve them a fun way. But I mean, you you probably have... 50 to 80, no less demographics, niches that, you know, everyone is a podcaster, but how many different types of shows, Mm -hmm. how many are topic based, how many are interview based, how, how many are solo? Yeah, that's so true. And the people create with video like you're doing now, like we're doing now, so they will create audio only. So there's so many, depending where you're starting with, there's so many ways you can go out and repurpose that content. So just having everybody share what works and just kind of gathering that information and, and packaging it up and just making it available to users. It's just the goal here is to A, help each other, but B, for users to get results. And the results are, you know, views, listens, exposure, what they want from, from their content. So that's, I like that. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. I got one question, but in, and I was smiling when you're like, first off, we all get our in our own way. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be a perfectionist, and this is going to go – I was smiling because I have one more question for you before we go to the imperfect action round. I have a whole part of the show dedicated to imperfect action, right. so you're going to love it. Um, the last question for uh, this part though is – I've been calling it the expert authority effect roller coaster because business is not always a straight line. There's mm-hmm. ups and downs. And I have questions that are like, who's your favorite celebrity? Like is a number one softball. And if you were the king of the world, what would you change about it for number 10? Two just came to mind because I'm feeling fun and I'm very excited about this. So they're both controversial. Which one do you want? Why is Canada better than the U.S.? Oof. Because <laughs> I know you're coming live from Toronto, yeah. or Raptors, <laughs> or what's better, 
podcasting or live streaming? Hmm. I'll take either two. way. I'll take number two. Okay. Sure. I was going to say either way. Yeah. Um, so what is better podcasting or live streaming? I, I love podcasters, but today with the current situation with social media and Facebook, and I would say if you can have the opportunity to live stream, you can have more instant exposure, but also you have a lot more ways to repurpose or change that content and put it on different platforms. If you're starting with an audio, I don't want to say you're limited. You can still repurpose it and put different platforms, but the, the video aspect of it, people connect with on platforms, especially like the Facebooks and the Instagram. People like to see people. When you're scrolling and you see, you don't see people, you don't stop in your feed. Right? When you see somebody, oh, hey, who's this guy? Oh, what's this guy got to say today? When you see faces, it makes a world of a difference. That's one. Two, repurposing is a lot, lot easier. You can repurpose that live into a podcast. So you're still not losing your audio podcast, but your creation is done via video, kind of like what we're doing now, exactly what we're doing now. Um, and then um, just now life, you know, LinkedIn is coming up with live streaming very soon. Well, it's available now, but it's going to be more available to more people. So these Facebooks, Instagram, you know, all these that do live streaming on, you get more, instant views of more attention from the social platform. So maybe five years from now, that'll be different. But if you were to start creating content today and you don't have a podcast and you don't know what to do, I say hundred percent live streaming because you can turn that into a podcast automatically with repurpose actually, um, or well, not or, and you can have that content in video format sliced and diced and automatically sent to different platforms like Twitter's and LinkedIn. Instagram, it's just more, you can, it's more easy to put video content on different social platforms. So starting with a live stream, um, you have a lot more opportunity is my opinion. And I like video. So <laughs> Inter interesting. Great answer. I, I was, I, 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 both of them were a trap a little bit because mm -hmm. either way you're going to annoy some part, but that's fine because everyone, and it's not annoy so much, but so many people are you know, what's better, Instagram or LinkedIn? What's better, YouTube or Facebook? It's like, it depends. There's no right answer. What's the best for you? And I mean, your software does both. I was like, well, he's going to like one of these. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I think they're both good. You're right with the live streaming. Video is a lot more work. Yeah. I got to be honest. I'm not even sure I'd tell people to, I mean, depending on the frequency of the show and other stuff, Audio is way easier. Definitely. If you just want to knock it out of the park, it, you have to be a little insane to do this. Yes. But people do like watching the images. It's a, I was asking Pat Flynn about this, and it's it really depends. It's not like one is exponentially better. It, it's your preference. If you don't like being on camera, stick with audio. Fair. If you need something to look at to keep your attention, probably do video. But thank you for the honesty because if you ask me that, I'm still deciding because people ask me nearly every day ever since I did this, what do you like better, the audio experience side of things or the video? I'm like, I could give you a boatload of benefits of both. Which one's going to fit you more? So either way, use a repurpose IO for it. Yeah. So, but, but one thing about live video, you can just get out there, no editing. You just go out there, you say your thing, and you get it out, which I know makes people nervous, but if you're a professional like me, you sit there and you, you take five, six, seven takes every time I record a video. And I, it takes, like this morning, I'm doing a training video on this new feature and repurpose. It's still not done. It's, I started yesterday, actually. And today I continued. I keep editing it and trying to make it look fancy and stuff. But to be honest, the bottom line is, is my, what, what, what I'm saying in that video is what's more important than how fancy it is. So... Sometimes going live just forces you to just just go live. A, people understand it's live. You're going to make mistakes. You kind of just chug along and you go through it. And B, you get it done. There's no editing. You know, you obviously got to be prepared beforehand, but you just, it's done. You record, you're live, finished. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to retake it or do anything. So that's one of the advantages right now of live streaming. People understand that it's live and 
and and B, there's no editing done. Just one take, one shot, which makes people nervous, but. It's fun though. It's not nervous. It's actually more calming because once you know it's live, your brain shuts off all of the it's not perfect and you just roll with it. There's been times where. I've messed up in the interview and I'm like, let me start over there or let me pause you right there. And then your brain's going into perfection mode when it's like, don't worry about it. I will add on. I do have a pet peeve with everyone using live for the podcast. Mm -hmm. Too many of them don't edit it. There's a difference from an edited professionally produced podcast. I will say that with audio. Fair. You want audio on the video both clean. You need a clean. I agree. I mean, it has to be good, like decent, so like, decent tool to record and, stream with. Yeah. As as much in this, I I don't even know how we got here. I was just trying to have a fun question. I was like, we're either going to go left, uh, left or right with this, or left or right with that, and um. But the reality is, I I love how accessible all this is. People can pick up their phone and just start going, and it's great. But I've been telling clients for over a decade, don't get stuck in startup mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can grab your phone. Yeah, you can run and gun. But is that really the type of business you want to create for the next five to ten years? At some point, you know, that's a whole other thing. But you loved your answer. I I agree. Mm -hmm. And clearly we're doing both of it. Is that even – both of it, whatever. We're going to go to the imperfect action round right after we thank our sponsor. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. And we are back again with the imperfect action round. Hanny, what's up? Oh, let's do it. I'm ready. How you doing? How you been? I'm good. I'm good. Long time no speak. <laughs> so, Mr. Perfectionist is in the imperfect action round. And we're going live. You okay? I'm good. Let's do it. All right. First question. What is the fastest path to the cash in your experience? Put something out there. Put something out there and get feedback, whether it's Good, bad, just put it out there. I like it and agree. Two, what is the biggest problem you see your prospects making in the fastest way they can fix it? Um, Not knowing what to say and as a result, not creating content, i.e. myself as an example. (laughs) So fastest way to fix it is um, listen, get feedback from your existing audience if you have it. Uh, if you don't talk about something that you enjoy that you can just ramble on forever on, I don't ramble on forever, but topics that you enjoy, um, pick one, put it out there. Uh, if you get good feedback, pick another one related to it. If you don't, then pivot and create a different style, of, not different type of content. So kind of goes back to the first one. All right. Three, what's the best way to maximize customer lifetime value? Be accessible to your customers, um, be genuine and helpful, and treat them as friends. Don't treat them as customers. I like it. Very good. Books. What book has made the biggest difference for you? I'll be perfectly honest. I don't read a lot or almost at all. Um, it's mostly, uh, well, I listen to one or two audiobooks, so I'm probably going to go with that. Um, I forget the those count. Uh, yeah, it's Steve Jobs' uh, biography, autobiography. Wow, it's been five years now, and I really en- it's a big long one. And listening to audio format, and I really enjoyed every bit of it. But to me, it was just one thing, a couple of things that stuck. With me, but one of them was just like the idea of how the, how clean things look on the inside, on the outside. Like when you build something, build it f- well from the inside and the outside, even though people can't see the inside. It's still really important to build it, you know, what people can see and what people can't see. So that's, that thing that sticks in my mind a lot. So it's interesting. You say that 
because I've thought the same thing. I remember when I was in video production, special effects, anima- 3D animation. It, I'm sure you've heard of Pixar, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're also saying this about Jobs. And for anyone that doesn't know, he uh, founded Pixar. And th- there's a very large connection there. And I was reading this article when I was in college and – they were talking about all the movies and everything and I was like, you know, what makes Pixar Pixar? And the article was talking about in Monsters, Inc., the cave they had, they didn't just – the the line that stuck out was, we sand the underside of the desk. Mm. And it's relating exactly to okay. what you're saying and I find this very intriguing because – you don't see the underside of a desk and especially with animation, the cave scene, they developed the whole thing around it. Hmm. In animation, you can fake stuff out. Oh, yeah. You can put – a, or even in live TV uh, broadcast, you can have two walls, set the camera angle, do a high shot, do a low shot, put the lights, the composition, and you can make it look bigger than it is or smaller than it is. There's a lot of camera tricks that are just fun to do. But you don't need a real house to shoot inside of a house. It would actually be a pain because the walls take away from the camera space and walking, a whole other thing. But how many people take that much care to sand the underside of the desk? And now you're you're saying you got – I got it from an article on Pixar and you're saying you heard the exact same thing from the book. Yeah, when they're building – I don't know, they're one of the early Macs, it was building it clean, from, you know, finished from the inside and the outside. And it was like – that stuck with me. I was like, Wow. You know, that's, I know it's almost counterintuitive to what I said earlier about build quickly and put something out there, but um, I, don't know, I just feel like it's, you got to have a solid foundation whenever, whatever you're building a product or service. Um, I would say it's more the values and standards because you can still take quick action, yeah. imperfect action, but there's a difference between, hey, let's take quick, imperfect action versus we just make shoddy products yeah. or services or that's just how we go about things. You know, um, how you do anything is how you do everything. And if, you know, you never return the shopping cart at the uh, grocery store, you probably slack in other areas and it's just the mindset behind it. So I get what you're saying. I don't think it's counterintuitive, but I'm glad you brought it up because I know it could be misconstrued that way. Is that the right word? I think it is. Close close enough. See, don't need to be a perfectionist. (laughs) Just roll with it. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Why don't we uh, tell people where they can find you? Uh, You can, if you want to connect with me personally, if you can head on over to hanimora.com. It's H-A-N-I-M-O-U-R-R-A. There's a link to my blog, Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, I'd love to connect with you, drop in, say hi. I'm not big on Twitter, but I hang out probably mostly on Facebook. I'm in the, one of the Facebook generations, I guess. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'll make sure all those are in the show notes. And Hanny, j- thanks for sharing with uh, Expert Authority World. I know they got a ton out of it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me here, Mario. Appreciate it. All right, Expert Authority World. We have another great episode. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow, and God bless. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five-plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I sure did. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to subscribe to the show. And also be sure to check out eainterviews.com for complete show notes, the full interview video experience, links to the resources we mentioned, and more. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you tomorrow.